Oh, taking a poop right on camera. Yeah, give everybody that real experience. Greenhouse is looking good. Garden's looking good. Neighbors are happy with the work that's being done, so that's good. Uh, with the rain and uh, some subscriber help, we actually have an idea. You know how I've been complaining about the soil, uh, about how, how hard it gets and how you need to do the fence posts and everything before the soil gets hard, before summer gets here? You always want to remember this. Your quality of your dirt is very important when it comes to what time of year you're setting posts. If you have a choice, you either want to do it in late fall or early spring before the ground dries out and gets hard. That is because in the winter, our soil is super sloppy, super muddy. When you walk in it, it sticks to your boots and you just get taller and taller and taller. Really, really cakey, gluey. And then it dries out and it's like this, this two or three month period where it's just fantastic dirt. Uh, great to work in, easy to shovel, easy to move around, retains some moisture, um, but then as soon as that moisture leaves, it is like concrete. It is so hard. And a subscriber said, why don't you take that negative thing, turn it around into a positive thing, and why don't you look at rammed earth, or cob buildings, rammed earth buildings, compressed earth building techniques, and see if there's a way that can help you with your root cellar idea. So I did the research, and sure enough, very old technique. Our forefathers were doing it. All of our forefathers were doing it. Uh, it was a thing to do. So I looked at it, and I was like, this is amazing. Potentially, this is a game changer for our root cellar plans. I mean, I was going to go with uh, some metal boxes that I had left over from the hab and uh, make them work. I'll take you out there and show you that. But I think this idea might work a lot better. To test the idea, first what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to get some dirt and we'll put some water in it and we're going to let this settle overnight uh, and see content of our soil gets. So let's go out and let's get this sample collected and let me show you what I was going to do. She runs so cute. You have such a cute run, beauty. He knows he's on camera. The rest of the troops. There's Snipsy. Good looking girl. Oh, taking a poop right on camera. Yeah, give everybody that real experience. Huh? Yeah, you're beautiful. What's up, big mama? Where's your daughter at? Where's trouble? Where is trouble? That's not good. Trouble. I was on being watched. Oh, there's nothing like the smell of fresh horse poop in the afternoon. Glorious. Man, you are taking your time. He looks good. He's a good looking cow right there. Nice back. Yeah, very proportional. And a giant pain in the butt. You see over my shoulder here those two green uh, boxes, those are the boxes that the Habs, uh, the Hab came in, essentially, the uh, building for the Hab. And uh, they're about four feet, a little bit over a meter wide, by about 12 feet, about three meters long, and also about a meter tall, a little, four, a little over a meter tall. And what I was going to do is I'm going to flip them up on each other and weld them shut and have that uh, be kind of the containment uh, or the not the main structure, but the skin, the skin, the skin of the uh, root cellar that I would then set down in the ground, underground, and, and not all of it would be underground. Some of it would be above ground. We'd, we'd uh, push dirt up over the top of it and cover it all up, and we'd have to put uh, structure on the inside, so we'd have to cut some timbers and uh, put some wood on the inside, and uh, that was kind of the idea of the project, and the whole premise is trying not to spend money, right? I mean, we're kind of in a spot where we don't want to be doing that. So I had those, uh, and then working with our neighbor, probably cut some timbers, and you know, uh, borrow a backhoe, and, and probably get the project done. It would not be the world's greatest uh, root cellar by any stretch of the imagination, and it would be pretty small, and uh, not a lot of room to grow. If this experiment proves fruitful, then what we can do is we could scratch that whole idea and 
just use the dirt that we have to excavate to rebuild the shelf or the root cellar. So what we need to do, I'm just out here at the site. It's just easy. You can actually see this dirt right here. This is the stuff. It just turns into a horrible, horrible substance when it gets dry. This stuff has been kicked up, uh, so it's above it's above grade right now. It's made it easy for me to come out here and grab this stuff. But if I let this stuff sit, it'll just it just stays hard, uh, and it just gets harder and harder as the moisture leaves it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up. Uh, and we're going to put water in this and we're going to see, we're going to shake it all up and we're going to see what percent uh, clay, silt, all these different things are in this dirt. Just put some water in here and you can already see the dirt settling down to the bottom as the water moves through it all. It's actually very cool. It's kind of like it's dissolving it. We're going to shake this bad boy up. And our objective is to get it to settle out. All the heavy stuff will settle first, lighter, 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 and we'll get a sedimentary levels in here. It'll all settle down, and we'll be able to see what we have. You can already see a lot of it down below. It looks like a lot of sand. So if you're doing um, rammed earth technique, they say somewhere between, based on the research I just did, so I'm not an expert, so go do your own research, but from what I've read from what I researched, spent a few hours on it, you really want somewhere between like 5 to 10 percent of a bonding agent of some sort uh, inside of your soil. If it's there naturally, yay. If it's not there naturally, then adding something like Portland cement, which is relatively cheap to get that ratio, you know, it's, that's not hard to, uh, to do that. So we need to let this settle, see what it's all like. Uh, and then we can kind of figure out what we need to do to amend it to make it uh, to where it works effectively. I think there's a chance we may not have to amend the soil at all, which would be great, saves us money. Uh, it would be bad, though, if I push my luck, don't amend the soil, build this whole thing, which would take a lot of labor, and, uh, and it falls apart. <laughs> you don't want that. But the cool thing about rammed earth, again, is it's been around for centuries, centuries. It's been around for centuries. Uh, and it lasts for centuries. If you do it right, it will last a very long time. Things like adobe, cob, rammed earth, compressed earth, these are the types of things that you may see in your country. Um, we're talking the original natives, the aborigines. They're the ones who really use these techniques, and you could see uh, our forefathers, uh, you can see their work still in existence today. So it is a very good building material. I think it's going to make a resurgence. But let me go out and show you the site that I'm thinking about doing this root cellar at. Here we are. This is the north side of the garden. And uh, Mrs. Marsh and I have walked the property. And we've thought about a few different locations. And we have decided that this is going to be the future home of our root cellar. Uh, main reasons that we chose this site really have to do with the ease of loading it from the garden as well as the ease of access from the house and most importantly the ease of getting snow blowing equipment into it so that we can actually access it during the cold dark months of winter when we have a ton of snow on the ground. Uh, I already snow blow the driveway which is to your right. Uh, you should see it just off scene and so all I have to do when I snow blow the driveway is simply back up to the root cellar with the snowblower on. No major changes to my pattern, no long distances to go, no huge hills to traverse, uh, just a simple access to this area. Uh, some of you are probably saying, well, there's a fence in the way. You're right, there is a fence in the way now. Uh, but what we're gonna have to do is uh, disconnect this fence, pull these posts, and pull the posts along the woodshed there and then, uh, or we might, we might end up leaving those ones and doing something different up here. And then we'll re-extend uh, back along the west line of the green, or the garden, and reattach it so this grazing area, or the grazing area, the pasture that's over there is enclosed. What we're gonna have to do is get a backhoe in here, 
and I have to uh, dig up everything. I got to do the plans first, so I'm going to use SolidWorks, go in there, design my, you know, what I want. Uh, I think a root seller should be more than just a root seller. You know, you can do, you can have some fun. You can have some fun. If we can do this whole rammed earth thing, we can have a lot of fun. Uh, we got to worry about the roof, but we can have a lot of fun building rooms. That'd be cool. That'd be way cool, man. It'd be super duper cool. And you know what's cool about it too is that if you went to Mars, you would actually be doing something like this. Uh, you kind of bring the real Martian theme back. You. When people go to Mars, there's so much radiation there because there's no magnetic field. Uh, you get hit with all this radiation. People are going to have to live underground until we get something figured out, which is, you know, a long way away. This is this type of stuff that we're going to be doing here is pertinent to everybody. It's not just our past where this is important. It's also our future. It's just very interesting. Just very interesting. I don't have any profound thoughts beyond that. It's just very, very interesting. So uh, what we've got to do here, we've got to drop these plans, I need to take some measurements, get this all figured out, figure out what we can do in this area, design it in SolidWorks, and then um, confirm that our uh, dirt study, I think I'm gonna do ram dirt no matter what, I, just because we can do so much with it. It is gonna take a lot of work to do it, uh, but maybe we can do a workshop or something, people are interested, I don't know, you know, with COVID out there, who knows if we can actually do that uh, and be safe, but I don't know, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Comment down below, folks. Hit the like button and comment. Comment the hell out of this video. Let us know what you think. This is really exciting. I'm really super excited for this idea. I think we can do a ton of stuff with it. Um, I think it's going to be great. And uh, we'll be able to smooth this out. We can do Miss Martian, and she like wants sunflowers and stuff around it, make it all pretty. We can even do more growing area here if we enclose it with fence. That's why I say maybe we don't pull those posts and we just reset here and we go. But anyway, uh, I think this would be really amazing. So it's going to take take 24 hours for that dirt probably to settle uh, and we'll see what we have. So uh, I'm going to call it quits on this video. Thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, and hit subscribe, ring that bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. And don't forget you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram to get some more of the behind-the-scenes uh, stuff that we're doing. And if you'd like to support what we're doing, you could do so through Patreon. For the cost of less than a candy bar per month and a really loud dog, uh, you can uh, support our efforts, and it goes a long way to helping us create great content for you and your family and give everyone a nice little laugh and chuckle in the afternoon uh, or morning, whenever you watch this. But in the meantime, this is The Real Martian. Out.